and yeah, so before we get started with this, I kick stuff under the table, but I, I have an apology to make <laughs> for totally disappearing for a month from doing their lives. I decided after all the things I'd thought of doing, I would just take a break. Um, so when I went up to visit my mum's, I took the executive, my mum's, no, I only have the one, my mother. <laughs> I took the executive decision and left all my filming equipment at home and just had a break. So sorry. <clears throat> oh, voice is already not making it. Sorry if you're wanting to come along for the um, needle felting advent calendar. I will peek in the rest of the bags at some point, definitely. Um, apologies, the red panda. We didn't have time to do that. That was the January make. We will be doing that. We definitely will be doing that because I'm excited to make it um, in a couple of weeks, probably. We'll see how that happens. Um, but I did want to because I didn't I didn't open I didn't get to open my my Merry Christmas cracker from my advent calendar. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, so there shouldn't be any surprises because everyone who's had it, AMSR, everyone who's had the the advent calendar will have done this like a whole month ago. But I just want to see what's in here because it's been intriguing me. We had a big cracker for the 25th. This was the maker's... Um, advent calendar this usually goes on sale in um, in the summer oh that is cute <laughs> um can i read this backwards we'll we'll always be there for you <laughs> with the sheep sheep puns loving it so i have a bag that i will put loads of to loads of good use. Yes, so today we're going to do the Maker's Monthly Subscription Box for January and that is the Love Heart, the Love Birds. Oh, I can't speak. Love Birds. So we'll get started on that in a moment. Um, but before we do, I'm just checking. I haven't done enough time to have a quick word from our sponsors yet um, but I do see we have Erica in the house thank you so much for joining me lovely to see you again too I hope everyone had an awesome Christmas New Year all that thing if you took a break you enjoyed it I definitely took a break I put my Etsy shop on vacation um, I did a little bit of drawing but apart from that I was pretty much yeah, enjoying my time off. Um, it was it was very nice just to do that. Um, so yeah, um, I will say I'll say before we get started, everyone who sells on Etsy or in fact sells online, uh, you want to keep an eye out for my video dropping on Tuesday. It's already and edited and everything. But myself and my friend Starla Moore have access to some top secret, super new data that Iran commissioned and gave it to us to distribute and share to you all. So Starla did her video that I totally forgot to grab a link for, but Starla did her video last Tuesday, one, her first video last Tuesday. You want to check that out. It's really good. And then I've got my first video in this series coming up on Tuesday. And this actually uh, was data I wasn't expecting. It's data about how long customers are willing to wait when they buy something from various sites. And it is very different um and i'm i'm very grateful for the advice because it's really actually like calmed down some of my fears so that's all good to know but yes the, the the quick word from our sponsor i have to wait a certain amount of time before i'm allowed to do this um because these videos are not sponsored by the makers i the makers are great friends of this channel that lovely people um but i do purchase the boxes myself with my own money so we have sponsor for this channel um which I'll put up in a second. Nelly there. Uh, sponsor for this channel is Creative Fabrica. If you don't know, I also do classes. I'm <laughs> How's this for teasing what's going to happen? Because I fidget with my hands when you're not looking. Um, I also have classes on there and there will be, hopefully, in a moment... Uh, a link this is an affiliate link if you sign up there you don't um you can sign in and get an account there you can you don't need to sign up for the things but it is my class to make this little a valentine's gnome which i thought fits in well with the love hearts 
the boxes here now with the love hearts theme so i made a gnome and i made another gnome and i made another gnome uh, <laughs> and they are actually really easy and super fun to make so if you're interested i do have the class in the course there or just sign up and have a look at all the cool things on creative fabrica as i said this is an affiliate link um but yeah that's that's just that's just my little thing there and you go away wrong thing put away i'm an idiot <laughs> <laughs> okay, excuse me one moment while I set up what I was supposed to be doing. Um, it's so, so long since I've done this kind of live, I'm forgetting how to do it. I see CJ's in the house. Hello there. And Christine, hello. Um, great to see you all. Thank you for joining. Um, so we're going to dig into the maker's box. I have unmuted the second mic. We shouldn't be having an echo. Um, so this is the lovebirds. Guys, let me know if your screen is back to front so the writing's gone the wrong way. I don't know what's happened there. But anyway, so Maker's Monthly Box. There is a link to the subscription in the descriptions. Oh, that's going to make so much noise. Um, <laughs> And this is going to be lovebirds. I would show you that, but I'm not sure if what's going on with my camera. It's been the wrong way around. Oh, here we go. We get a close up of the lovebirds that we're hopefully making. And oh, they've got brilliant. There's workshops coming up for 2D felting, um, YouTube videos. Uh, yeah, exciting. Oh, and a snowdrop tutorial. Oh, perfect. I will not give you a close-up of that because you've got to get these things to see this. Our noisy but ever beautiful red tissue paper. <laughs> Erica, great gnome. Thank you. I, I really enjoyed making them. It's such an easy project. I was surprised how well it went. Um, oh, and so we've got lovebirds. February's going to be a robin in a nest box, and March is going to be a hippo. I've seen sneak peeks of the hippo, and he looks great. So there is. If you haven't been with me and seen the maker's kit before, you get everything you need in a kit. If it's your first kit, I believe you get needles as well, but you get everything you need and the instructions to make the project. Um Oh, we can make two Fisher's Lovebirds. They look gorgeous and colourful. And we do actually get the wreath thing that they're going to go in. I'm dropping bits of wood. But that is cool. But it's also bad because that means I'm going to have to do the project to size. I thought if we were going to weave this ourselves, which... Yeah, I can't be trusted to do things like that on camera. I thought if we're going to weave things ourselves, I could do it half size. But I'm going to have to do this project to maker size. Um, we also have some pipe cleaners. Oh, a stronger bit of wire. Oh, a chocolate. <laughs> Just as well, I opened this on time. And these will be some eyes, which I will. I will be sensible. I'll just put them to the side just now and then I will totally lose them. Um, oh, and there's some thread in there. I think, yes, it's a very coloured thread. Um, Erica says the screen's okay. Thank you so much. And quirky qu quilted creations. You've given me a tongue twister. Love it. Uh, love the lovebirds. They look so pretty. I'm looking forward to making them. And yes. I'm also nervous. Okay, so the birds are going to be about 18 centimetres, which is big for me. <laughs> but we can do that. We can do that. Let's let's dive in and get started. These projects usually take me about two, two lives, if this is your first time here. Um, but we'll see. Because I'm making it bigger, it might take longer. Um, okay. Split all of your wool into two equal parts. That makes a bunch of sense. So this is the core wool. This is the lanolin rich core wool. If you haven't used it before, it felt really well and is good for your hands, unless you're allergic, obviously. But it's good for your hands because it's got lanolin. So it's it's dirty sheep wool, but it's that's a good thing. <laughs> so it does feel a bit we weird if you're not used to it. 
Oh, that is pretty. Okay, that's not my usual kind of colours, but that is pretty. <laughs> um, so a multicoloured bit, we're going to snip that in half. These are not my good scissors. Yeah, and so that's tops. It's a good time to show the difference between tops and bats because as you can see, tops, all the fibers are in one direction. It's like hair, whereas bats is fluffy fuzziness. Oh, that's a bit duller on camera. This is a neon green in real life. I really need to figure out how to alter the settings on my camera because that is like day glow and it looks like mustardy green <laughs> on camera. Um, but we get it. These colours are so pretty. I want to do more parrots and lovebirds and everything because they are so pretty. There's a little bit more tops. So I'm just going to cut that with the scissors. And a little bit of grey too. Um, I can divide that that way because these have loads of colors in them i didn't want to separate them out sidey ways because then we'd mix up the colors but with a single color i can just split it down the middle if that makes sense and a teeny portion of white i do have lots of white lying all over the place all right we will pop that out of the way roll the sleeves up <laughs> i am nervous to get to work on this but excited it's been a while since i've felt it on camera okay take half of the allocated lanolin rich whoa. whoa so that's half of a half let's just do it it really is sticking to itself <laughs> which is good it makes it easier to felt with but yes flatten the sheet measuring about 10 centimeters by about 20 So we're a bit too long because of the way I split it. That is about 10 by 20. There's an, always a nice little ruler down the side, which is so helpful. Um, roll the shape to form a sausage about 10 centimetres long. So, yeah, actually, that's not bad for me. Um, and felt it in a little bit to secure it who's who's done the lovebirds yet i've actually as i say i've seen um i've seen some of the steps of the hippo but i haven't i didn't know this was lovebirds today till today which is great um that was it was a nice surprise so who's done the lovebirds already um Okay, now use the body template as a guide. This is so cool, there is templates here. I see it. So this means rounding one end off and making one side curved. This is so unlike me that I'm actually, it fits in the shape of the template quite well. So we've got a sort of tail shape happening here and chest happening here so i'm just going to felt this a little bit um these projects are like suitable for beginners generally um actually if you've been felting for a while the trouble i have is that i want to be too perfectionist and i spend too long like felting down every single piece and then i end up making it too firm and too felted so i i run out of materials um <laughs> so i'm trying to be be looser this year and yes it does say note the shape is still fairly soft softly felted so shaping will happen because we are going to be adding colors um I'm reading it. <laughs> I've forgotten how to felt and talk and read at the same time. Um, okay, so we're taking a half of this again to roll into a head shape. So roll into a ball, which instead of doing the sausage, I just go sort of all in different directions. Yeah. 
Christine, you're still waiting for the kit to arrive. Should be here on the 26th. Oh, in Canada, it takes a while to receive. Yeah, absolutely. And shipping is oh slow just now. Um, especially I think Australia, Canada, and Italy are struggling when sending with international shipping just now, which is a pain. Um, UK shipping. I got my maker's box like super quickly. Um, but it's hit and miss. Some things are coming next day. Some things are taking two weeks. It is it is a problem for sure. And Erica's lovebirds are done without the kit. <laughs> cool. Off piste. I I do like I say I want to I want to do parrots and loads of colourful other birds. Okay, we've got we've got two shapes. See, I'm everybody give me that pat on the back for not spending hours extra firming the firming firming the things up. Um, add the head to the body. Uh, re refer to the template for the position. <laughs> yes, I've got to keep remembering to do this. It is cool. There is. I turned the page over, didn't I? So the temp there's a template on the back, so you can keep yourself right. Hey, hey, for me, that is not bad. I am usually terrible at fo following directions. So, so far, I'm, I'm happy that I'm kind of got something that's the shape it's supposed to be. So, if you're new to needle felting, when you poke the needle in, it takes fibres from where you've gone and sort of drags them all the way through so I'm taking fibers from the head and pushing them into the body and from the body and into the head and that means you can attach piece piece can felt can't talk you can attach pieces and it forms like a full solid shape without any seams or anything um, so that's a really cool thing about needle felting um, and it also takes if, if you're totally brand new, you're taking sheep's wool and matting the fibres together with your special needle to form a 3D solid piece of fabric, a piece of felt. So super cool. Your needle does the sculpting for you. Whatever direction you push the needle in, that pulls fibres down the way so it compresses things into the middle so as I'm felt in around the head I keep it moving so that I I get a rounder shape um Diana hello there hi Pam and Flop, Floppy <laughs> I'm giving you new names by the inability to talk Fluffy friends happy new year <laughs> happy new year everybody good to see good to see you all okay so that's kind of attached there's going to be more more farming as we go along. So usually I would spend like far too long doing this, but that's like what ten minutes, and we've got we've got a shape that you could still tear this off at the moment in time. It will get more secure as we go along. So split the remaining bit of wool in half. That was a half, then a quarter. We're about an eighth now, and flatten into a sheet about ten by ten, which is magically already that uh, lay this sheet over the head so we're just smoothing down the body the head onto the body um so it goes over the head and about halfway down the body um pull it tight and begin felting it down onto the body so we've, we've made a sheet um Now it looks like a ghost. <laughs> the ghost of something you've eaten and passed recently, but a ghost. <laughs> um, but it does still say, don't be alarmed. And never, whenever I am felting, things go through such ugly stages. Um, I'm, I'm getting better at it, but my dogs used to look like frogs or ducks. Um, and everything went through an ugly stage. And that's where so many, like, mother... I'm looking at you, but that's where, where so many people give up because they'll start felting and it will look ugly. It will look really bad and they'll just say, oh, I can't do this. I give up. But you've just got to keep 
forcing it into what you want. You've got the idea in your head how you want it to look. You just keep on felting and it generally becomes right. Um, I've not had touch wood. I've not had many disasters because the good thing is, if this is totally a terrible shape, I think we're doing not bad. Not, not to brag. Um, but, you know, I think we're doing not too bad. But if it looked terrible, it's only wool. I can take scissors, I can cut it, I can add bits. You know, there's no no hassle there. Um, it will look very te top heavy and <laughs> just felt the wool sheet down, edging your way up towards the head. Um, So we've basically smoothed out the neck area. Um, Diana's done her lovebirds. Um, Erica's talking about ice cream. <laughs> I, I like the sound of that. If anyone wants to bring ice cream while I'm here, that sounds great. So at this stage, the shape is almost completely done. This is making me really nervous because, again, I would spend like over an hour just making this stage, but um, I'm trying to be good. Um, but the shape is mostly established. Take the rest of the lanolin-rich wool and split it into three. We're down to really tiny bits, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can figure out a three. One third. Two thirds and three thirds. Okay, one part will become the tail. Stick into me. Become the tail. I. This is a really bad thing. But um, here, here's personal things you didn't want to know. But I used to have like really rough sides of my fingers. Um, and I kind of. I, I fidget at it. And then I've not been felting so much for, for this year. I've been taking it a bit easier, doing other things and trying to take some time out and just watch telly without felting. And I noticed my fingers are rough again. I need to fidget with something. I need to um, felt, felt or do something with my hands. Otherwise, I just worry at the skin at the sides of my nails, which is disgusting. So I think I'm going to have to get myself some fidget toys if I want to sit and just be able to watch TV without having to felt. Um, oh, CJ, thank you so much. Um, treats for Mia. <laughs> thank you so much. And the birds. I will... This week I'm going to the pet shop and I will get, I will get Mia something nice and I'll get the birds something nice because we have a lot of crows are living in the neighborhood just now and they are they are fun to watch strutting about the place and pretending to be to pre pretending to be the big man until the magpie comes and then they're like nope we're out of here and first lay one portion of the wall on the side where the wings will go and felt down to build a little bulk of the bird okay i've got to i've got to see you get an idea of what we're doing here. Um, so you are the side of the bird. I'm going to even even check my template. Yeah, okay, so that the wing does go where I thought it should go. So we're just making a bit of bulk. Um, And obviously do the same on the other side. So, yeah, so we're not making a wing. We're just giving them, giving them some shoulders and a kind of feeling of a wing. And it helps to give you an idea of whether you're in the right direction, you know, whether you're doing everything and what weighs up and stuff once you start putting these bits on. Um, still nervous about making a total mess of this, but <laughs> we can do it. And then I wonder, because I assume that 
the second one is going to be pretty much the same as the first. So if we get all of this done, then next week we've got to try and make another one. And I wonder if I'll be able to make it better because I've got an idea of what I'm doing or I'll get cocky <laughs> and I'll make a mess of it. Um, really 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 want to felt a whole lot more and then if I do it'll get too small and I'll get told off for it felted it too firmly <laughs> okay tail take the remaining core wall and flatten it into eight centimeters by eight so it was a bit too long so I'm just pulling fibers across each other and sort of stacking it up um which roughly magically is about eight by eight then fold it in half then fold the edges to form a triangular shape gotcha so we have a triangle um use the tail template yay <laughs> it's like do i have to do the jaggy edges do that oh I, I want a round of applause for actually making things that fit into the shape. Um, Lorna, hello there. You loved making these. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoy I can't wait to get the colour on. Um, Diana, oh, don't be alarmed if there are not many watching. Actually, we've got 16, which is not bad. Only, only 12 likes. Give me a thumbs up. We've got 16, which is not bad for the first one back of the year. And I don't think I gave anyone any notice. Um, the, oh, my computer's beeping at me. The Maker's Winter, oh, of course, the Maker's Winter Retreat is on. We're very jealous. <laughs> oh, they seem to be having a great time. I bet they are. Yeah, how, I, I've lost touch with everything that's going on. So I really, I really have to look, and, look at that and see what everyone's doing. That sounds so good. So jealous. <laughs> um, Yes. So what what are they making just now? Um guys, let let me know what the, the retreat folks are making and then when we're finished here we can go over and drool at whatever they're all doing. Yeah, I completely Facebook is randomly showing me stuff and I keep forgetting to click on the specific groups because I'm and then I just go, Oh, I've not seen anything for the makers for ages and I realise it's because Facebook hates me. Um, so, yeah, if you want to see things from particular groups, you have to click on them and comment on them and stuff. So, yeah. So, felt the top part of the tail. I should have read this before I actually started just assuming this was what I'm doing. Um, but leave the other end unfelted. The wispy ends are convenient to hold when felting. Oh, we're getting on to colours soon. So we fan out the bottom and <laughs> it's a small tail extension. <laughs> oh no, Diana, they're making a very large dragon. That is not fair. That that they they shouldn't be making a dragon without me there. That is that is <laughs> no, I've got to go and see that. A very large dragon sounds fantastic. Yeah, you you now, if you've been here for any time, I have issues. I have issues with dragons in that I, if if given the choice, I would just felt dragons all day. It's it's my favourite thing to do. Oh, Lorna, are you going to save up and go to the summer retreat? They look like they're having fun. I bet they are. Oh, it'd be so much fun. Yes. I don't, I don't want to plan for anything just now. Like just meeting some friends in Glasgow sounds like a huge step at the minute in time. Um, but I'm sure things are getting better and by the summer it'll be fun to get out and do all these things. Yeah. This will make the tail longer by about one and a half to two centimetres. Okay, my, my bird's bird's gonna possibly have a little more a little more tail than that. I I love birds like birds with really short tails. They kind of I've kind of went off piste and given them big tails. That's okay, we okay. That's fine. <laughs> um 
Okay, next take a pinch of the Flamingo Mountain Sheep. <laughs> Which is that? <laughs> oh, I've lost track already. Um, I should have looked at these before I did it. Um, okay, so that's orange, green, multi-tone Australian tops. This gorgeous. Um, neon green. I was right. I said it's a neon colour. It's neon. Um, it must be this. Fling, mingo. Yeah, grey. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I just thought from the picture it was more orange, but it's quite... What? It's an orangey. It looks... Actually, it looks the perfect colour on the camera. Um, <laughs> Lorna loves dragons too. Um, and Diana's going to be there next time as well. Oh, I look forward to it. Okay. Am I using... Oh, no. We take a pinch of the flamingo mountain sheep, roll it into a... Three and a half centimeter wide roll. Cool. And felt to a pointy beak shape. Um, curved down the way. So we'll we'll go with this. Careful not to <laughs> not to stab myself. It'd be terrible on my first day back if, if we had blood. <laughs> Oh, quirky. I make it look so easy. Oh, thank you so much. It's firstly the kits, not sponsored by the makers, but the kits um, do make it easy because you've got step by step. You don't have to think too much, which is always good for me if I'm having to stab and talk and create something. Um, but it really helps you get an idea of what shape everything should be, where everything goes. Um, sounds good. Um, and the materials it, it really helps um so often like if anyone hasn't felt it before and you're looking to get a kit doesn't have to be the maker's kit the maker's kits are good quality but don't like i've made the mistakes don't go in even like hobby craft kits anything like that don't go into them don't buy a kit if it contains a polystyrene ball ever they're, they're, they're terrible and also read this is merino tops it's gorgeous and it's expensive stuff and it's great for top dressing things but don't get a kit if it says all of the wool is merino because you're going to hate it you're going to hate felting and you're going to not finish off the piece so many kits will have a polystyrene ball and then merino and expect you to make things whereas it's much easier to sculpt shapes out of bats this this stuff that has fuzzy all directions can we yeah fuzzy all directions instead of fibrous all in one direction is what you want for sculpting shapes um Tops are amazing for long hair. They're great that you can get a ton of colours in them. They're good for making curls. Like, yeah, curls. They're good for making curls. Two cameras. <laughs> um, but they're not so easy to sculpt with. You can. Um, and I'm sure plenty of us do when you've run out of the, thing, the colours you want and stuff and you want to do something. But... For a beginner, you really, really, really want to start with the right, right materials so things felt together so much quicker. Um, CJ, it looks like a tangerine colour. Yeah, um, in real life, it's it's a peachy pink. Um, I'm trying to explain it, but it is definitely nowhere near as orangey as it looks. But Yes, once I figured it out, we've got the right right thing. And I am just felting the beak a little bit firmer because when you're going to put it on the face and stuff, it's it'll get deformed less as I fart about and you know work on everything else. Um, and it does stay to felt the end of this, not to leave the fibres loose. I was just in my head, I was going, this is going to leave a lot of fuzzy nonsense all over his face, but no, felt the end down flat. His beak might end up being a little bit bigger. Um, Pam used the stencil. Well, yeah. <laughs> he, ah, no, 
oh, they have quite big mouths in the picture. And Erica, as long as you send me pictures, absolutely. Um, everyone who goes to, if you're going to these retreats, we need to see all of the pictures, all of the, all of the everything. Um, oh, thank you guys. Now I'm looking and saying there's 15 people watching and 16 thumbs up. So thank you so much. I don't know how that's possible, but well, no, I do. Um, someone popped in, gave a bit of love, and then had to leave. But thank you so much. It it means nothing apart from it makes me happy. Uh, Lorna, wool bats are the best. Absolutely, getting the right materials is is the best. It just makes it so much easier. Right. We have a beak for now, and then much smaller, but version um, for the bottom of his beak. I was going to say the bottom of his jaw. It's still a beak. Rosani, happy 2022. <laughs> Hello, good to see you. Um, yes, we're doing lovebirds today, so I, I want to see a, a masquerade paper Papier mache lovebird from you, Rosa. <laughs> Says it like Pam can give out tasks to people. This is what you need to make. Um, but yes, we're doing lovebirds, which are very exciting. <laughs> very cute, actually. Yeah, I hope everyone's had a great start to the year. I don't know. I suppose I've done more than I'm giving myself credit for, but I always like start the year and I think, you know, it's it's your clean, it's your clean school book. It's, you know, you're starting off on a fresh page and I'm so motivated and I do so much stuff. And I just feel this year I just didn't come back and do as much as I thought. Um, but actually I've done a fair bit. Um, there's some cool stuff coming. Oh, um, I know, I know Rosani seen it. I know some of you have seen it, but if you haven't seen it, I went through uh the the crafting the the trends that are going to be popular in 2022 that was a whole bunch of fun i am i'm all up for the nighttime road trip luminescence look which is a bioluminescence all the kind of glow in the dark um like glowy funguses and all the mushrooms let's not fungus sounds like something that grows on your toes um but you know all the the beautiful glowy at night times things i'm definitely i'm gonna have to dig out the i got oh a couple of years ago some glow in the dark felting wool it was expensive <laughs> but it glows so i'm gonna have to think of some projects to do with that definitely like mushrooms and things yeah what other things can we make the glows in? i mean ghosts but we're not at halloween yet so slow down but i'm wearing a halloween top because it was cold and it's got sleeves um and then i roll my sleeves up rosani's already inspired awesome oh diane i can't find the thumbs up on the computer <laughs> oh well thank you hey you're here and you're chatting to me that's the best thing too Okay, use, an in, use your needle to make an indentation where the beak will sit. Where are you going, Beaky? It's going about here. I felt the larger part the right way around. I'm just thinking to... <laughs> Let's just stick his beak... <laughs> stick his beak in the right way around. Oh, that is so cute. Look when the second one goes on, how sweet it looks. I hope mine does as well. I love the colours on this. It is so beautiful. I really hope I can do justice. Um... <laughs> Diana, thank you. Um, I don't actually see the emoji. Do I see? I see Rosani's heart, but I'm seeing Diana's saying you got this but thank you <laughs> you got it love it um i don't know some emojis are showing up but not not everyone's yeah. okay this beak is taking its time to attach but it's important to make sure the beak's firmly attached obviously and that you stab down into the head not like across because then i would draw some of these peachy pink fibers like off to the top of his head. We want to keep it a little bit clean. Right, I'm I'm too new. I want to see how this works. 
That is cute. Yes, I think my my nose is too my beak's too big, but I don't care. Um, I still think it's cute. Uh, it's, de it's definitely a beak. <laughs> But yes, the maker's one is the lower beak is a bit smaller, so I will uh, check for symmetry. Yes, your head's quite a bit fatter and your beak's a bit skinnier, but I'm learning. It's my first time. I don't make many birds at all. I really should make some more. But yes, check for symmetry, make sure it's all straight. Um, shorten the beak by stabbing into the head. I think we definitely need to shorten this a wee bit. And that is the good thing. You can ex um, not extend, you can reduce the size of something by felting into it and that contracts the fibres if you've gone overboard like I did. I think it'll still be cute. Um, a uh, Rosani glow in the dark hearts or a phoenix. Oh, I like a phoenix. The only problem with the glow in the dark wool that I've got is it currently I could only get it in white. So it will have to be accents that will glow white. It would be so cool. Oh, somebody make. Hang on. She's had a thought. <laughs> I want to see because there are some hair dyes. My friend Carly, if she's in the house dyes her hair the most fantastic neon glow in the dark colors well they're uv reactive rather than glow in the dark i don't but uv react could i use hair dye to i i sense an experiment coming up could i dye use hair dye to dye wool to make it into neon uv react that would be so cool I think I'm going to do it. If, right. If somebody could make UV reactive felting wool, that would save me making a lot of mess. But if they don't, I, I see an experiment coming up. Um, or is any, thank you. It's looking good. It, it looks like something. It's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit comedy like cartoon, but that's how my stuff goes. Um, I quirky, you just ordered a starter kit. I hope you picked a good one with the right materials. I didn't realise there were so many different materials. Yep, sadly there are, but hopefully you've got something good. And the good thing with needle felting is, right, kits, because companies are trying to get your money, might not be so much, but getting the extras you need isn't necessarily expensive. Like, if you've got a kit that's a bit rubbish, order in some core just get some core wool um you can get like the lanolin rich bats from places like the makers um but any um i also really like carded white corridale from world of wool um blue faced lester bats people used to rave about them years ago but just get some inexpensive real wool bats and then you can throw if you've got like i'm not saying like this merino is not bad stuff. It's just not easy to felt with in the first place. So if you got, if you paid a couple of quid to get some nice core wool, then you can make everything, you know, throw away the polystyrene ball, tie some of the bats in a knot to make a ball and work from the hair. And, and then you won't be frustrated with the kit. Hopefully. Um, okay. Right, now it's time to colour the bird. We'll start, take your orange green multi and split it into the colours um, <laughs> the best you can so they're not contaminated. That's not going to be easy. Okay, yellow. The orange and green just want to contaminate each other. That's only a little bit. Um... perfect but it, it's good enough whatever i'm watching me it's good enough <laughs> oh there we go there we go yes take a wisp of the green and stop the orange sticking to your arm um so we want to make the wisps slightly shorter 
just by pulling them apart and stacking them or it does say you can make them even shorter um you can tear them but that's a bit annoying so if you snip them and then you've got a shorter staple length and still pull them apart stack them on top of each other and that hides a blunt end that you've just created um Oh, Erica, I, yeah, if you're on phones, yeah, I, I can never find anything. In, I can never find chat on a phone. But press the X to, to lose chat, give a thumbs up, and then come back to live chat. Thank you. Um, I don't know how you do these on phones. Um, then lay underneath the bird's tail and felt down. Always felt in the direction the feather would run naturally. Next, do the same with the blue, but this time from the top. Okay, so it's green underneath and blue on the top. That is such a pretty colour combination. And this blue is a lovely blend of lots of different colours. I thought I had something different there. Okay, um, so... The blue tone from the top can you tell i'm getting excited to put on the color um to put all the colors on because this is i've not i've not done anything like this before and then you take some of the gray And you put some of the grey, definitely needs to be shortened. Put some of the grey on top of the blue, they will hopefully blend into each other and it'll look kind of nice. Um. Oh, Diana, thank you. Um, any bits that are mixed are used later for a dirty orange. Thank you. Excellent. So any that I messed up, that's fine because <laughs> the orange and the green did just want to be want to be friends together but we've got blue and gray and green underneath use the neon um what am i looking for ne oh neon green yes this color add wispy bits onto the birds tummy yes these colors blend so nicely because that's a nice sort of mossy green but the neon green does work good with it Those colours are so amazing. And then my camera's just not doing it justice. Um, but that is a super bright neon green to a nice kind of mossy green. And then we've got blue blending in to grey just now. Um... Oh, Diana, you could just about do everything on the trusty old iPad, but it died on you. Oh, no, yeah. My my phone gave up the ghost, so I had to I had to get a new one. And there's so much I can't do with it because, unfortunately, my old phone. For the past few phones, I've had uh, I've had Huawei's because the cameras are so good. But then there's international unpleasantness between China and the rest of the world, kind of thing, and we can't buy Huawei phones anymore. So I had to get a non one, and. I'm getting there's some bad things that are turning out to be good like I can't seem to get the Facebook app to work so um, that was really frustrating me until I realized I can just log into Facebook on the browser on my phone but I can't get hit with notifications all the time <laughs> because we live our lives too much on Facebook bullying us and saying you have something to do right now you have someone to speak to so really nice um the neon green will also have to cover up the sides of the bird towards the head um 
but keep it wispy so you can blow. I was actually accidentally doing that anyway. <laughs> Yay! Um, because I haven't even looked to see, like before you're making something you've never made before, you should really look and see. Ooh, we had a gnomalanche over here, an avalanche of names. You should look and see what the real things look like, but I didn't. Um, all right, take the lighter yellow um, and much less of the neon green bats. So we're making a yellowy neon green and shorten the yellow and blend them together i really should get an extra pair of carding brushes or dog slicker brushes extra pair of carding brushes and have them up here so i can just quickly card out to blend colors and um, because it does make it so much easier but this is only a tiny amount so i'm basically just pinching each end and gently letting the fibers run across each other and then stacking it and this blends colors together and a little cheat because all the fibers are a bit well, that would kind of work anyway but if you want to blend something quicker you can go sideways which messes up the fibers which is bad but then you go this way again and that sets the fibers the right way again and you just get a much quicker blend um okay add this to the chest this should reach all the way to the base of the head which i seem to right you just turn that oh i think i've got just about enough almost We'll just make, we'll just use a little yellow to blend it out. And felt down and, yep, yeah, nice quick blend. Next, split your darker green i had a darker that this is a darker green it is now um into three shorter strands about 15 centimeters long uh we'll, we'll take that one it's got a bit of yellow got too much yellow in it okay three shorter strands about 15 centimeters long that's about roughly um uh, Quirky, you're most welcome. Thank you for your product suggestions and guidance. I'm excited to try needle felting. I'm excited to see what you make. See, all these people, all these new people come and they like within like two weeks they're better than me. <laughs> Diana Quirky. <laughs> um, keep two to one side, which were made into the wings. Use one strand, shorten the fiber. Use a little bit of the neon green. Oh, and this goes up the back. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Right, we need a lot more of that then. Which has a bit of yellow in it, which isn't bad. Um, <laughs> Diana, yeah, absolutely. Uh, once you start, you'll get addicted like the rest of us. She's not wrong. <laughs> we did warn you. Um, felt along the back and allow... A little bit of the grey to be visible. There we go. We're just going to fluff you up a little bit more. Just to get a nicer blend. I think I might even need some more, but we'll come back to that. Okay, 
to say we want to cut I want to overlap a bit of the green to the grey so I'm just going to do that so it'll be a bit darker down the bottom it's like a little crazy skirt this will just blend that a little easier because the grey to blue is an okay blend a grey to green was looking a bit like a harsh line so we'll just do that to make it look a little more slightly more realistic um, now, what, are we doing the wings in different colours or do I have to cover in this area? <laughs> Read ahead, skip ahead. Um, it definitely looks more yellow along the side, so we're going to take a bit of the neon green and fill in that gap. Um, Lorna, yeah, it's what happened to you. You stabbed your first 2D heart shape and you were hooked. Yep, same. I Except I totally don't follow any of the advice I give to go easy on it. And my first thing I made was a small a, a small dog um, of my own, <laughs> of my own design. And when I look at him, he's not great, but it still, it got me hooked. So that's, that's good enough to me, for me. Yeah, what was everybody's first first needle felting project? Um, as I say, I got I saw the book. I don't think I have it here, but fleece dogs, um, and I got that and ordered a starter a starter kit there, and then read through the book, ignored most of the guidelines, and just made my made one of my own dogs. Um, but yeah, I was totally hooked, and then I mentioned to people that I was doing needle felting and people started asking me to make things before I was even any good at all <laughs> I was really bad <laughs> but people were asking me to for little commissions and they were so nice about it so that's that's what got me started and thankfully because I had the commissions it gave me a chance to keep like felting and learn to be better um, which was really good although I do feel a bit embarrassed about some of my first ones they were terrible but anyway um keep oh yes I'll keep this two to one side uh, uh thank you yes my contaminated orange green multi-tone tops so it's not as good I, I did too good in separating them there so contaminated um We'll take it, we'll contaminate it a bit more. <laughs> um, mix as well as shorten the fibres to make a dirty orange. Yeah, guys, thank you for keeping me right. I can't, I, I don't, I don't read every single bit of the directions while I'm doing this. I'm, I'm working off the pictures quite a bit, so sometimes I miss things. So, yes, the dirty orange helped a whole load. Um... Oh, Diana, I'm going to make separate wings and attach them. That's so I don't have to make the sides so pretty. That's good. Um, CJ, I oh, jump jump straight into the dragon series. Oh, cool! Thank you. That was I really enjoyed making that dragon. All dragons, but I enjoyed the chance to make a dragon series. Um, Lona, your first three D was a dolphin. No kit. It was an easy animal to start with. Well, they are and they aren't. I've only made one dolphin. Um, when. I went over to the Isle of Arran and we're driving around it and there was dolphins all over the place jumping out of the water and everything. I, I went home and I made a dolphin. So they're, they're not super easy, but they are fun. It's 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 a good smooth shape to get you started. Um, lay these... Uh, Lay these as with all the layers running down the body but covering the head on the back and the sides. I think I'm going to need more of this, am I? I needed more dirty, more dirty orange. Where did you come from? I don't know. All right, um, so we will do. Uh, yeah, so it was really cool seeing seeing dolphins even at a distance, and they were remarkably difficult to photograph. I had a 
bit of a telephoto lens with me so I raced back to the car and tried to zoom in on them but you'd look at one patch of the sea and then they would jump up just like you're focused here and they're just like I'm gonna do something awesome just over here really really <laughs> they, they don't perform like they're supposed to it's very terrible right so dirty orange with I think we're going to have to plug in a little bit of a gap here. And then dirty orange all down the back and sides of his head. So just trying to fan this out so it'll fit. and then tack it down with a bit of an overlap. And the green does really sort of help it blend in and look like it belongs. Not as good as what the makers have done because they spent actual time doing this. <laughs> but I still think he's gonna look cute. Yeah. Okay, take the darker orange tops and mix a little of the lighter yellow. That's going to be for his front. So, darker and yellow. So, let's have a lot of this to start with so I don't mess up straight away. And shorten. Uh, Diana, you're inspired to make a dolphin now. Yeah, absolutely you should. Let's... Let's fill the world with dolphins. <laughs> it's a fun project. Um, it really is because you can get all sorts of lovely shapes. I was trying to do the the dolphins leaping out of the water with that gorgeous curved body, and yeah, Lorna, we have to we have to see your dolphin. That sounds so cool. Okay, there's a still looks a little blunt where I cut it. There we go. So lay over. over here, round here, cover everything. <laughs> oh, cut, cut the ends off rather than felting them. Well, we've already felted them down. That's okay. Um, for the final, take the darker orange wool, which we don't have much of left. The cut edge needs to form the edge between the beak. Okay, right, we're trying to make a neat edge at the beak. I will neaten this up in a second. <laughs> it will become neater. I'm not quite following. I, I know what they told me to do. Um but I'm not quite doing that. Okay, three needful. Just need to... Those colours are amazing. I actually want to have spent, like, several hours more on getting a really good blend. This will look amazing if you spend the time to really felt it down smooth. Um... So I think, hmm, yeah, I think that's what I should do, actually. Instead of having you watch me do this all over again, I will take the second one up to this level and then we'll work on finishing them next week, if that sounds good to you guys. Rather than me, I don't want to rush this guy and have him look terrible because it's such a lovely project and I want to do a good job on the second one. So... I will get both of them to this because, yeah, you said we've got wings and we've still got wings and feet and decorations. There's still plenty to do. We've still got to get them onto <laughs> the bow. So I think that's a better idea. I would, pardon me, I will follow um, directions to this point for a second one and we'll have a pair at this, at this stage next week. And then how's he going to fit? Quite, quite a chunky boy, so that's cool. I can felt him down and smooth him out a bit. 
and then you don't have to watch me do all of this again <laughs> but hopefully i know how to do it and i'll just do it on my own day okay everyone's happy with a plan <laughs> that's cool right so i will pretty much leave you to it um let's let's put this away so you get you get all the gloriousness of my my behind <laughs> i nearly said not good um yeah so we're going to work on blending f felting this a bit firmer finishing him up doing all the all the details that make him gorgeous um and we'll be back to this next week um like i said don't forget if you sell online and stuff you really want to check out my tuesday video and then check out starla's part of that series as well style and more for anyone that don't know um but yeah um but most importantly come back here next sunday at same time same place everyone have an awesome week um yeah have fun <laughs> thank